uh, as a pastor, my ethic is above that. Um, not just as a pastor, just as a Christian, my ethic is above that. Um, so for me, I'm fair. I'm open to anyone. Uh, as I stated, you probably heard in my city commission meeting, and I didn't even initially come out and state it until someone said that, hey, you know, I've talked with Brian Cloudis, and I said, I haven't talked with him. Thank you. And, and I will say, let me say, I'll usually meet with anyone that asks to meet with me. And so I haven't met with Mr. Cloudis or Ms. Piazza because neither one of them have requested uh, to meet with me. So I find it interesting how one can say they're going to represent the city and not really meet with individuals that are, you know, trying to help envision things for the city. Um, as well. So, but so, Mr. Thompson, I think when you want to report things and I know you like the candidates that you like, but, you know, from a, a political standpoint, how can you run for state representative and not even attempt to try to formally have a conversation with the mayor or the city manager of a city that you say you're trying to represent? So as a political consultant, can you help me understand that? How can you want me to tell you? Yes, I want you to help me because because you're endorsing. If I'm not mistaken, you're endorsing Brian Cloud, is correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Man, so let me, let me, as a hold on, man, as a political let me, let me, consultant, man, hang on, hang on. Okay. I reached out to you to, and I asked you five questions about why you were standing in the dark in Brian Cloudis's office in the Hive, which is a shared office space. Correct. And you haven't answered a single question. But now you want me to tell you right. what's going on in Brian's head? Well, the reason I'm asking that is because Brian has my number just like you do. If these were his concerns, he could have easily called me and asked me that. Or he could have asked me while I was there when he saw me face to face. Are the answers easy answers? The answers are pretty simple. <clears throat> All right. So why don't we get to them then? Because I want you to answer my question, Mr. Thompson. And I'm going to put out there that Mr. Thompson refused to answer my questions, just like Brian Cloudis has refused to have a formal meeting with me. Okay, so what we'll do, I, th I think this conversation has gone in a way that I think you're right. I think that the entire conversation um, should be shared and, and not edited at all. That's fine. Okay, so uh, why don't I guess I answer all your questions first and then you answer all my questions. Would that be fair? Sure. OK, what are your questions? One of my questions is, as a state representative or someone running for state office, why has Mr. Cloud has not formally tried to meet with myself or the city manager in the uh, city of Lynn Haven? My, my answer to you is, I don't know. I don't know if he has or if he hasn't. I have no idea. OK, next my next question is, why are you calling me on behalf of Mr. Cloud? Mr. Cloud, Mr. Cloud, Mr. Cloud saw because me. Mr. Well, Cloud no, told me this morning. I cop wind of this, and I want to know what you were doing there. Okay. I, look, now I'm a watchdog. I'm a journalist. It's very I, weird that the mayor of Lynn Haven is standing in the dark next to the desk. Okay, of so so let me ask you this, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Thompson. Wait, no, what, no, 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 no. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just answer my questions. Okay. What are you accusing me of? Because obviously you're thinking something to even call me with this. What are you accusing me? Mayor, of? Mayor, I, I'm not accusing you. Of, I'm asking, what were you doing there? Can you answer that? Sure. So what do you want to know, Mr. Mr. Thompson? What were you doing next to Brian Cloud? So dad? for one, let's get if the facts. Let's, let's get the facts straight. One, I was never next to Mr. Cloud. Desk. There's, There's also cameras in there, I believe. So one I was never next to Mr. Cloud. desk. So whoever okay. told you that, if Mr. Cloud has told you that, he told you a lie. So let's start. Where were you? Well, I don't know who told you that, but let's start with that. Where, where, where were you? I was at the desk over by the uh, across the room from Mr. Cloudus's desk. So not even near Mr. Cloudus's desk. Nowhere near Mr. Cloudus's desk. I was at the Kirkman Group's desk because I sell real estate. I'm a licensed real estate agent with the Kirkman Group. My wife is also a licensed real estate agent with the Kirkman Group. I had an appointment this morning in Chipley, Florida at 1130 a.m., which I went to the Kirkman Group's desk to print my paperwork off so that I could be prepared for my appointment this morning for my showing in Chipley, Florida. Okay. So you sell real estate? Yes. I'm did, a, I'm, did Brian ask you if you sold real estate? He didn't ask me that, no. Okay. And was anybody with you? My daughter was with me. Okay. In the car? Yes. Okay. 
have you been in the high prior to this? I have been in the prior, high prior to this. I was in the high Wednesday. Matter of fact, you can go to the Kirkman Group's Facebook page, see my face in the picture of being a part of the group at the Hive. Okay. I was at the Hive this previous Wednesday. This was my first time ever seeing Mr. Cloudus at the Hive. Okay. Did you know that he was there? Uh, yeah, his okay. desk is right there. I mean, it's obviously I can see his desk right there. So he has his desk. He has his stuff there. Most people assume that this is campaign headquarters because I've been there and people have come by looking for me. Then they have another number posted to see if you're looking for Brian Cloudus to meet with him. Call this number or something like that. Did you did you or your wife start renting office space at the Hive recently? We don't rent the office space. The Kirkman Group rents the office space. We work for the Kirkman Group. How, how do you spell that? Kirkland. Kirkman. Scott Kirkman. So you, your wife did not start renting or, or did the Kirkland group start renting office space recently? Within the past couple of months, probably. Yes. OK, so so that's what happened. So so the real estate group started renting space in there. Correct. Before I became a real estate agent with that group. Yes. OK. All right. So that's it. You You, you are selling real estate for the for the group and uh you were just in there preparing for a meeting today at 11 and uh, brian walked in and you guys had a very brief conversation he, he says that the first thing that happened was you said uh it's been a big campaign week hasn't it and he said do you have office space here and and, and i'm just asking if this is a yeah. conversation and then you said my wife has office space here she sells real estate and he says you he asked if you sold real estate and he, he said no he did not ask me if i sold real estate mr thompson back, right out the back door mr thompson he didn't ask me if i sold real estate what's that he did not ask me if i sold real estate again okay. let's, so 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 let's go on the facts here one okay. if he told y'all beside his desk that's a lie so that's fact number one that he gave you is a lie Fact number two, he never asked me if I sold real estate. If he told you that he asked me that, and if I did not answer, then that's another lie. So Mr. Cloudus is telling you lies, Mr. Thompson. Okay. I wonder what else he's lying about. If he's telling you simple lies that I'm beside his desk, when there's nothing with our real estate group that's even near his desk, wasn't even near the guy's desk. Matter of fact, you, when you go to the hive, you can see where I signed in to the hive. You have to have a thumbprint to get in the hive. So there's no sneaky backdoor stuff going on for whatever he might be trying to accuse me of or whatever you're trying to insinuate that he's trying to accuse me of. OK, well, now we have both sides of the story, don't we? No, we have the truth now. You had his side before. Now you have the truth. And Mr. Thompson, and you can share this publicly, you know, however you want to do it. Oh, yeah, we will. The whole, the whole thing on that. Yeah. yeah. But please don't drag me into the dirty politics that you all like to play, because I don't do that. I, I'm, I'm so serious. I don't. The, the, dirt, the dirty politics I like to play. I said you all. I didn't say just you. Whoever out there plays it. I mean, you have your show. You say things on your show. You incriminate people on your show. You even have me on your show saying, hey, what kind of pastor is this if he has Arthur Cullen as his campaign manager? You should really not. You should separate from him then. He's a scumbag. You are aware of that, right? I mean, that's your opinion, though. So you, you, did you ever communicate with the uh, account Alex Cantone? I did not. Nope. <clears throat> you never did. You never communicated with Alex Cantone. I never communicated with Alex Cantone. No, sir. Do you know who that is? I do not. No, sir. You don't know that Alex Cantone was a fake account that Arthur Cohen used? That's what I've heard you all say, but I don't know that for a fact. You don't know that. And you don't, you don't ask your friend? I didn't ask him about it, no, sir. That's just something you don't think about asking him, huh? I mean, just like you haven't asked Brian Cloud, is, has he talked with the mayor and city manager of Lynn Haven? Okay. Did he ever reach out to you trying to set up a meeting with you? Uh, I met Mr. Cloudus twice. First time I met Mr. Cloudus was random. These are random meetings. First time I met Mr. Cloudus was at Best Buy. I was checking out. Mr. Cloudus said, oh, hey, Mayor. And we spoke a little bit. He says, I'm going to reach out to you. I said, OK. Never heard from him. Yeah. 
Second time I ran into Mr. Clouds was at the 4th of July parade. Did he, did he ever email you or ask you to meet? He emailed me after, notice when he emails me, he emails me after a city commission meeting whenever I say Mr. Cloudus has not reached out to me to ask for a meeting. Because Judy Tinder was saying, hey, I had a great meeting with Brian Cloudus. And I said, well, I haven't heard from Mr. Brian Cloudus to have a meeting with him. Then Mr. Cloudus that night reaches out to me. I follow up with Mr. Cloudus. I text Mr. I respond back to his email. I give him a date that I can meet. Mr. Cloudus said he wasn't available. So I would, I mean, just like you're curious about the questions I ask my friends, I would probably ask you the same thing. You don't ask your friends if you're really trying to represent someone, why haven't you met with them? Why haven't you asked about what is their political, why haven't you, why haven't you asked what is the campaign manager having fake accounts that are nasty as hell? I mean, that's it. That's equivalent to that, Mayor Nelson. No, we're talking about asking questions. We're, you're, we're talking about asking questions of our friends. So I'm asking you, why haven't you asked? Look, I'm happy to ask because I want you guys talking. I want to talk to all of you. As a matter of fact, I'm thrilled that you call me. And I think that we should communicate more often. Well, and here's the thing, Mr. Mr. Thompson. You communicate in a way, your rhetoric is different than the way that I like to communicate. I don't communicate that way. I'm just saying the way your rhetoric, your rhetoric is different than how I communicate. Like I don't call people scumbags and stuff like that. That's just not my rhetoric. Right. So oftentimes, and you might be a great guy to talk to and communicate with, Maybe. but oftentimes uh, your rhetoric is a turnoff for me anyway, because I just don't communicate that way. Gotcha. So I'm not saying that you're a bad guy. It's just for me, I don't, I don't do that type of rhetoric. I don't, you know, talk bad about people and things of that nature. I just don't.